Okay, well, good evening, everyone, to another Lens Lounge discussion where we've got somebody in completely different. We've got Paul Gregory, and he's a freelance food photographer, which I have got no knowledge of, so I'm really looking forward to hearing all about this this evening, Paul, and I'm sure it'll be good for everybody else that's listening here this evening. So thank you for joining us on Lens Lounge. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll see if you learn things tonight. You never know. I might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming on, Paul. I really appreciate it as well. No, I really appreciate being invited. It's great. Thank you. Okay. No it's problem. It, yeah, it's good to have uh, another, you know, um, a different kind mm. of photographer because I think in the last few ones we've um, actually interviewed or talk, spoke with a uh, landscape photographer. Mm. Uh, some were um, looking at macro and I, but majority landscape. So yeah. it's good to have um, something quite specialised. It is quite specialised, quite niche. And funny you say that I was um, I do a lot of camera club and photographic uh, uh, photographic groups and societies. I go and do talks and a lot of Zoom over the joys of lockdown and stuff. And I always get this was at so different and it is it's really nice to get that little bit of change because mm. it is different it's not you know your portraiture your wedding photography your landscape your macro and stuff that everybody it is very specialized and it does scare a lot of people but it's such a good fun, such <laughs> good fun. it's basically just um normal question that we ask everyone mm -hmm. is that what made you actually uh take um you know the genre of uh, food photography because like what we've discussed earlier people normally when they pick up um, a camera they mm. take photos of their local beauty spots or beaches and, and those things and then those yeah. who are interested in in looking at flowers then starts uh, looking at macro and then graduate yeah. somewhere there and same yeah. thing that People like to take photos of their kids and things, and then moves on to for, for, for portrait portrait mm -hmm. photography. So, but it's it's quite, uh, you know, I wouldn't say rare, but very um, it's it's very it's not your everyday thing to actually meet a food photographer. No, I kind of fell into it to be honest with you. So, um, I did the whole education. I went to college university quite late or about 23 24 when I started in photographic education I'd inherited my uncle's AE1 proper camera when I was about 15 and absolutely fell in love with it worked in camera shops and whatever and then um, decided I'm going to do this properly and I went to college and all through college university I'm going to be a portrait photographer I'm going to do fashion based portraits going to be ranking I'm going to be Bailey I'm going to be David LaChapelle boom 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 and was actually, that was my thing. Graduated, spent six weeks working in studios in London. I was like, no, 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 thanks. Blows for Gamma Cowboys, this is not for me. <laughs> it was hard work, but I thoroughly enjoyed the hard work. But it was not my environment, and it wasn't the sort of people I wanted to be around. Um, so I did the thing. I'd always worked in camera shops. I went and worked with Jessup's. I was uh, uh, working with Jessup as a student, and then when I graduated, okay, part-time job, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, I ended up um, being introduced to a food stylist plus a home economist. Now, I don't know if anybody knows what a home ec or a food stylist is, but I'll just kind of throw it in there. Um, mm -hmm. Watch things like Saturday Kitchen or Jay Miller's cooking mm -hmm. programs, whatever. They've got all all the bowls all the veg and the stuff all prepped up ready to go yeah they haven't done that you know they've it's been prepped by a home economist the home economist james martin's a classic example of that mm -hmm. the kitchen i love james martin by the way i'm not doing him down but that's a massive name um and you know at 9 30 in the morning he puts his massive joint of, joint of beef into the ovens and he slow roasts that for four hours 9 30 in the morning he wasn't there <laughs> He put in his joint beef in the <laughs> oven. It was the home economist or the food stylist that was there, putting it in the oven, prepping it, getting it ready, getting everything else ready for it. He swans in, bless him, and just looks James mm. Martinish. And, and all the chefs, they do it. They rock in, and they mm. do what they need to do. So it, but I met a home economist slash food stylist who was a mm -hmm. neighbour of my in-laws, and um, 
yeah, I met her at a barbecue and we got chatting about the photography and the fact that I love to cook and blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, she was doing a shoot with Pyrex at her house a couple of weeks come along. And I met her assistant and I kind hmm. of got the bug and I worked with her assistant and it kind of went from there. The portfolio got built and I photographed mm. things that I was making. I love to cook anyway, always have. So yeah. it's, oh, we'll make a cake, we'll take a picture, do this, do that. So it kind of spawned from there. Yeah, and um, actually, that are a good segue to to my next question because um, I know both Brian and and Glads would have their own question, but I think it's just when we talking about food stylists and and you know food economists, mm. um, I was just wondering whether in your shots is a food stylist actually um required or do you do all of that yourself? Do you know what? I would love to have a food stylist on every single shoot I do. Um, the reality of it is, I know we've got some images coming up later, haven't we? So I'll talk you through what, who did what, and blah, blah, blah. But I say it's kind of 33, 33, 33. I do that, you know, when I'm working, I'm either on my own cooking and shooting food at home in the studio. So therefore, I have to cook it and make it look pretty. Uh, job mm. food stylist, make it look pretty. Um, or the other jobs I do, I end uh, the types of work I do, I end up with um, individual authors, chefs, writers, and we're going through 90 of their recipes in the space of two weeks. And we they cook every single thing. So between us, we make it look pretty. We style it between us. We have the conversation. Mm -hmm. We know what it what they necessarily want to look, what it wants to look like. And then I get those fantastic occasions where I'm on a job where there is budget for a food stylist and work with them to make it all come together with the client. And it's just, it makes life so much easier and you, you a lot more effective, but I'd say it's kind of, yeah, 33.3, 33.3. And 33.3. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just thought about all the chefs, the food must be really good as well. <laughs> As a <laughs> Do you know what? I don't. I, I can never turn turn down cake or cookies, cakes or biscuits. I t if you could, if I stood up, you'd see. I don't turn down cake or cookies. <laughs> um, but Glad has met me in real life, and she knows I'm a. I like my food. Yes. I mm. um I live to eat. I don't eat to live. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know, I I don't. When you're working with food all day, you don't always fancy it. Yeah. Mm. So I will have a little nibble. If it's fish, then I can't eat fish. Fish doesn't like me. I don't like fish. So keep away from fish. So your lovely mm. bowl in the background there, Janet, I wouldn't go anywhere near that, <laughs> although it looks stunning. But mm. I've done two fish cookbooks, both mm. of which I've had to cook and style 50% of the cookies myself. So that was a that was good fun. Um but no, yeah, it it is what it is. Mm -hmm. okay. that's good what of that I'm wondering what are your challenges in food photography because like today I was talking to someone and they've done a little bit of food photography and port lived on portraits and she said that she had to use real chocolate <laughs> from one um client that was asking her to shoot homemade chocolates and she said the worst bit mm. was melting so I was wondering do you actually have situations like that or do you have a replacement so it looks like chocolate or ice cream so if you right, so there's urban myth and urban legend about what food photographers used to use or do use this, that, and the other. In days gone by, yes, they used to put um, fairy liquid, sorry, washing up liquid. Other, other, other detergents are available. <laughs> washing up liquid, um, even motor oil on a roast on a chicken, roast chicken to make it look beautiful. Now we just use butter, olive oil, maybe a little bit of vegetable glycerin, mix a little bit of oil to just ping a little bit. Um, when lighting technology wasn't as good as it is now, it's all very physically hot, very, mm. you know, very high temperature running bulbs. You couldn't shoot ice cream. So it was a lot of the time you'd find mashed potato being used. I'm very, I can put my hand on heart and say 95, 99.999% of everything that I shoot is real. Um, I don't like wasting food, especially when I'm shooting at home. But, you know, there are tips and tricks that we use. So, for example, ice cream, a couple of tricks. 
So ice cream, and also if you're doing advertising work or stuff like that, you you have to use that project, that product legally. You have to use that product. Let's not get into the McDonald's, Burger King, or this sort of stuff that we've seen <laughs> in, the, in the press in the last two or three months. But if you're advertising, you have to use what you're advertising. So there's little tricks that we use. So for example, ice cream. If you need to shoot ice cream, a for in a studio, the, the air con goes right the way down. <laughs> it could be July and you're in fleeces and hoodies and whatever. But also you pre-scoop the ice cream 24 hours beforehand and you open freeze it on a metal tray with parchment and you open freeze it and you will always scoop two to three times more than what you need. Mm. And then the stylist, the client, myself will pick the scoop that looks best, even if it's just going on a, I don't know, on a, on a pudding, on an apple crumble, or a piece of pie, or a brownie, whatever, it all has to look at the part. Mm. Um, I did do a job a couple of years ago with a group of Navy chefs. It was a charity book for the Royal Marine Royal Navy charity, and we were in a 21, 22, 85 degrees in this kitchen with 10 sweaty, sweary mm. Navy <laughs> 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 and it was a beautiful, beautiful kind of um, fine food, kind of a la carte, fine dining mm. food that they were turning out. And it was beautiful. And like, the ice cream's melting, the ice cream's melting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I had a backup. So there are um, certain brands of cake frosting you can buy in the supermarkets, the own brand. Um, there's all there's a very well known American brand. I'm not going to mention the brand because I'm not. Um, but um, yeah, if you mix that frosting with a little bit of about half a tablespoon a tablespoon of icing sugar, sifted, and you mix it and you fridge it, it goops like ice cream and it sits for about 15, 20 minutes, and it <laughs> looks like ice cream. So I I introduced them to the joys of fake ice cream. Um, so mm. you can get all the flavors as well, so you can make it look. So that's you know that's an, sometimes you are forced to think on your feet, and you know oh we can do this and we can do that. You know, um, I'm trying to think of other examples actually where you've had to do stuff like that during lockdown. I was working on a, a project with a um, a client, and it was it was cookies, and I think I used twelve cookies, but I think I made about eight dozen. Oh, to make sure <laughs> they were the right shape and the right my neighbors loved me during lockdown they really really did they absolutely <laughs> adored me i'd go around with little red cross food parcels knock on the door step two meters back enjoy and just, <laughs> you know. but no it was yeah it's, it's that kind of thing it's make people think oh you just make 12 cookies no you know mm. you can you can easily um, double or triple. I did a job with a, a cake maker in West Sussex again, just on the outside of lockdown, and it was twelve cakes. I had three of each flavour, big by like, eight mm. inch three tiered cakes in case there was a problem with them, mm-hmm. and I did have to take the top off one, replace it with another, and take this from this and this from this. So again, my friends and family adored me because I'd be doing the cake <laughs> crust. You know, dropping around these such great <laughs> lumps of coffee cake and blah blah blah. Fantastic. I tell you, um, my kids would have loved you if you did that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially you know, my girls yes. would be like, "Yay, <laughs> cake, biscuits, ice cream." I was very popular. Very popular, especially with the business around the studio. I was working in a, a warehouse or oh. whatever. I'm like, right, do you want chocolate or strawberry, guys? And they just, you know, leave it on a on a tray on a on a chair in the middle of the car park help yourselves mm. and yeah it's, <laughs> it's crazy but you do have to do these things and this mm. is the thing I hate mm. food waste I absolutely hate food waste mm-hmm. so I'm more than happy to share it with this that and the other and people are like well let me pay you for it no 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 it's been paid for by the client by the publisher yeah gonna, I don't want to have to throw this away mm. um and recently at You've got apps like Olio, and I'm going to use mm-hmm. the name Olio, which is a fantastic food sharing app. And I've made some really good friends using Olio. You know, I've got all this fish or that, and you pop it mm. on there, and people say yes, I'll have it, thank you, and it's it's great. It's really really helpful. 
it helps people out and it makes me feel makes me know I'm you know I know I'm not throwing food away I'm not being wasteful with food (laughs) yeah that's true so Brian yeah. Okay. Well, one one thing I'm quite interested to hear about, Paul. You know, when you're when you're doing it, see all the foods that you get. Is it all your own ideas, or does your client have an influence of what they want you to do? So, you generally get a brief. So, I majority of my work is cookbooks. Okay. At the moment, so the majority of the work is cookbooks, and you go to a client, and they have their eighty, ninety recipes, and they have in their head how they might want it to look. Sometimes it's great. The idea is great. Sometimes it's the it's, it's my personality. I'm I can be okay. Yeah, let's try it like that. But how about if we did it like this? Because you can look at the food straight away and go or see the image of the food and see how they're cooking it and go, that's not going to work. That's not mm-hmm. going to stand up okay. the way she wants it to. It's not going to do that. So it is very much a. Um, it's a collaborative process and I love that, especially working with a food stylist. Yeah. In the situation with a food stylist, you've got the art director, you've got the client. Um, I do a lot of work with an Irish airline and um, there's generally about seven or eight of us in a room when we do that. And there's an image of that coming up later. But so there's me, my assistant, the food stylist, her assistant, client times two and probably... Um, someone from the caterer who are creative, created the food and um, my computer with kid um, <laughs> genius friend called Alex, who is, who is a digital operator who does all the computer wizardry for me. So I don't have to think about mm-hmm. it. There's eight of us in a room and it's very collaborative. And okay. there are times you just step away and talk to the client, or talk to the food stylist, three of them, you go, right, this is what we're going to do. But otherwise you get people in, you know, you get everybody's opinion. Um, it is the old thing of, you know, um, uh, too many cooks, but you do get, you do sometimes get great feedback and great ideas. Mm-hmm. When I'm working one-on-one with a chef or an author or a writer, it goes one of two ways. They've either got a really good idea of what they want to do and they've got a vision mm-hmm. and it works and we just need to tweak it a little bit to make it practical mm-hmm. or they, <laughs> by their own admission, and you know, and I've worked with many people like this, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name names, but they've been really like, got the food, no idea how I want it to look. I know it, it could look like this and blah blah blah, and they're completely reliant on me. But I do get them involved and say, well, this is what I'm thinking. This one mm-hmm. looks like. Okay. This is yeah. where Google Image Search and the internet comes in, of Instagram and Facebook coming because it's like, let's have a little Google. You've made a, I don't know. Um, Chicken tikka masala. First thing comes to my head, what I've had for dinner. <laughs> and, you know, this is how it could look. We could do it like this. We could do it like that. You know, so yeah, yeah. it is very much, the research is there. If I'm if I'm doing one of my solo projects where I'm cooking and shooting everything, you know, in the studio at home, then I always get the um, the author or the chef or the person who created the recipe to send me some images that they've shot. Again, onto the Google machine, have a look, Google images, have a look, see what's out there, look at other photographers' work and just see, right, well, that's a nice idea. I've got this crockery. I can do this. I can do that. That would look really good on this colour background. So it is, okay. yeah. Right, okay. That's interesting to hear then because I often wondered that when I saw the, the you know, the photographs, but I really appreciate that. And then... Um, you working go. with magazines, sorry, Brian, working with magazines um, on a cookbook shoot. So, uh, for example, I don't know, let's use um, Jamie Oliver as an example, his cookbooks. They, the 80, 90 recipes will be meticulously planned out. They'll have a mood board for every single recipe. Okay. And it will be, you know, but you're talking tens, almost, you know, tens of thousands of pounds being spent mm. on, 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 on the production of the book so they can take time, you know, to get it right. So they're not, oh, we can do it like this, we can do it like that. There's pretty much a mood board for each recipe, right? We're going to have that pie on this dish, on this colour background. We're going to have this colour napkin. We're going to have this in the background, blah, blah, blah. And it's pretty much there, shot by shot. Mm-hmm. So, and on, on a... On a magazine shoot, again, if you look at someone like BBC Good Food or Olive or Delicious or Sainsbury's or Waitrose or whoever, 
other supermarkets and magazines are available, you'll find that, you know, you get, um, again, it's all laid out and everything is there and there's a selection of props for that shot. Mm. That, that the art director, the stylist, the photographer, the author, the, the chef, the writer have said, this will work. And you've got a couple mm-hmm. of options to play with it because it, on, on the day it doesn't – best laid plans doesn't always go. doesn't always go that way. <laughs> I'm just curious as well, um, Paul. You know, yeah. you, you did say that you do work on the brief and then on the show – uh, itself you you know you collaborate on on the final mm. styling and, and yeah. shoot. have you ever experienced that you actually took shots yourselves you know uh which is different from what was discussed and then showed it together with the final you know the final shots yeah. of the ones that they wanted to take and mm. and actually the sh- uh, shot that you took that wasn't part of the discussion was picked up yeah so there are two phrases i use it's either humor me or trust me these are mm. those, the most <laughs> two little nuggets well. so with the client so um we'll so we've agreed we're going to shoot the cake on this cake stand with this background and this here and that there and blah 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 we shoot it it's fine it's right just humor me i just want to tweak that a little bit and we'll change that and it might be a complete, it might just be a change of background. It might be a change of um, lighting. It might, you know, just a really subtle change. Or, and we this has happened a couple of times before, we rip it apart and start again. Work. And, um, yeah, we try and, the amount of times that I've done my humour me, trust me, and we've shot how the client wants, and then actually I've supplied them what they want and I've gone ahead and done my little thing and gone and just kind of off on my little tangent a little bit and tried a new background tried a new lighting or stripped the whole lot back and started afresh and mm. they've actually preferred what I've produced obviously mm. I'm I'm talking to them about I've got them involved the whole way but mm. yeah it's it's it is funny sometimes how someone's idea is so kind of there and then they go oh why didn't I think of that or well, that's actually yeah there was one client I worked with on one of on her first cookbook, and she, I don't like that background. But just trust me, just trust me, because you see a background and it's vinyl and it looks a bit flat, and you put light on it and you mm. shoot it. Obviously, we all know what you look at through. You know, you look at with the naked eye. By the time you've made your eye, so adjustments, you've adjusted your shutter speed to do this, and and your aperture set to you know to create a certain depth of field or lack of depth of field. And you throw flash into that because I use flash because I'm a control mm. freak. It looks totally different. So mm. by the time I've shot it, it's come off the screen. And she's gone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mm. trust you. That's it. So yeah, there are those occasions. Definitely those occasions. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, and um, the one thing I'd like to ask. I mean, obviously, mm. what's the what would you say is the hardest thing or most challenging that maybe someone a client's come to you and you've had to really maybe do a lot of research to find out about it? Have you got anything like that you could talk about? What I'm doing at the moment, in fact, um, so publisher I worked with, they contacted me last year and said, um, do you want to do a wine book for us? Okay. So basically I'm chasing around Oxfordshire and the surrounding areas at the minute, uh, going to wineries and vineyards. And um, obviously we are not at the time of year to be photographing anything agricultural, anything live, any kind of you know, flora, plants, trees, crops, and anything like that, because it's either not been sown, it's dead, or mm. it's hibernating. And that's mm. the thing with the vineyards, the wine vines and vineyards at the minute, everything is hibernating. So I'm able to photograph the wines that are being featured and being discussed, I'm able to photograph the actual vineyards and so on, but we're having to be a bit creative when it comes to the shot of the exterior of the vineyard. So mm. it's a lot of going into the clients, um, the, the actual vineyards archives and seeing what they've got that are licensed images that they've had produced and they're licensed to use and reproduce. So okay. that's one of the things, but I'm not a wine drinker. Um, so I have done a bit of research on, you know, on, on the vineyards and 
lines and the areas and I'm now a little bit, I'm no expert, but I'm a little bit more savvy. But no, it's, there are things that kind of come up and you think, hmm. Another example, uh, we were talking earlier about the um, the Royal Navy cookbook, the Royal Marines, Royal Navy charity, uh, where the publisher contacted me and said, yep, yeah, Navy cookbook, charity cookbook, great. So I Googled Navy food. <laughs> <laughs> I got what looked like TV trays with all the, you know, the, you, you know, the, the trays you get on airlines or you get at school, all the uh -huh. you put that in there and that, and, oh my word, how on earth? But when <laughs> I went and met them and, 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 and spoke to the lead chef that's running this team of 10 chefs who are awesome, by the way, Royal Navy chefs are, they work in very, very difficult conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, they're at sea. Um, sometimes they're in, you know, they're working in 85, 90, 90 plus heat, um, you know, and, but this food was just absolutely stunning. The book, <laughs> the uh, book is called Galley, G-A-L-L-E-Y. And if you mm. see a copy of it, have a look, because it is, the food is absolutely stunning. It is fine dining mm -hmm. i'd say it's michelin star you know it the mm. way it was presented and we knocked about 80 recipes in five days oh. that is no mean feat mm. 80 in five days is no mean feat um but i learned a lot and what i didn't realize and this is what i love about my job is i pick up every day is a school day you learn things about the people you work with and you know and the areas and so mm -hmm. on and um I didn't realise that when the guys are on deployment and they're at sea, they'll make stops in, in different locations and they'll have local diplomats and, 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 and dignitaries and so on on board. And apparently more of the world's issues are sorted around around the dinner table than they are by bombs and guns. Mm. Mm. And, you know, they'll have cocktail parties and dinner parties and these guys are turning out six seven course menus wow. in cramped hot tiny conditions but food absolutely stunning mm -hmm. um yeah so again it's think, things you pick up you know you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, that's uh, good. i just wanted to because we we all talk about you know like the styling the you know with the navy, mm. um, with the navy cooks, where you thought there's mm -hmm. go just gonna be like you know TV, like a dinner in at school, they, they put blop in little <laughs> things. So, um, my my question, I'm just curious your your thought process. You know, when you mm. are when you are actually preparing for a shoot or mm. you know get taking um a commission, um, how important to you is the visual storytelling of the things that you're doing. So which means that um the food that you the or the photo of the food that you produce would actually encourage either the amateur cook in you know in the little kitchen mm. down in little Huggleton uh, mm. would want to to cook this this recipe or the person that's actually looking at the menu would want to to eat it because it looks really stunning and it looks delicious mm. and things so how important is that in your thought process is it you know that the the photo you're taking is actually telling a story but same way with the wine you know if i look yeah. at the wine would it encourage me to drink that wine even though it's if you're wine, wine. yeah <laughs> if you're into wine then maybe who knows um it's it's 200% that's where that that focus that story that that final image is what it's all about for me the things with cookbooks and so on and, and the kind of cookbooks I work on um the author or the writer the chef their story um is actually what's endearing people to maybe look at the book in the first place or they've seen pictures of food on social media which you know that's that's the hook we always say that you know that we eat with our eyes don't we you know if, yes. it, if a plate of food looks yes. inviting and gorgeous then mm -hmm. boom I'm, I'm having that um 
so it's that 100%. But again, for me, I think the other thing that comes into play is the fact that when the person's been hooked, seen that picture of the food and gone, <laughs> that looks awesome, yes. they read the recipe. And a lot of the time in, in the books I work on, there's a little bit, there's a bit of, I don't know, a little bit of copy, a couple of sentences, maybe a short mm-hmm. paragraph that say about that say something about this recipe and you know and i think that's that hook mm. yes if it's a fish dish and you happen to love smoked salmon it's a smoked salmon dish mm. this that the other that looks gonna fancy it but then you hear that it was i don't know grandma's recipe has been passed down through and actually that's more endearing and it is that kind of kind of head heart moment yeah Mm -hmm. and that's what i love about the publisher i work with we get a lot of those um i do a lot of charity i've done a fair few charity books with them um and yeah again the stories behind the charities are fantastic and that's also a massive Mm. massive pull but no Mm. 100 percent. that picture is what drags people in but i think Mm. with a lot of the work i do the majority of the um cookbook stuff there's that story i do a lot of brand work as well with small local brands and mm. social media that first image has got to drag you in it's got to make you go wow mm-hmm. um and then that's the hook to then go and have a look at that cafe website that you know the the instagram in you know have a look a little further <laughs> and get more in depth but it that image is that what needs to <laughs> i've always said it needs to grab you by the eyeballs and twist yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. Taking account of the culture as well, you know, because for example, like, you know, Mediterranean culture, we love mm. having food around the table and sitting for hours. You know how it's like because obviously you're with a girl that is Latin, so you know how it's like we like to spend long time. Yeah. Food and that's and actually that time was that. Chatting and talking and drinking wine. So do you take that into account as well when you take do you know what? Yeah, very much so. And the amount of times um, that I've shot at my partner's house during lockdown, whatever, when we were all bubbled up, it's like, right, I've got to do this job. I'm going to take over your kitchen lab and I'm going to do this. And there would be, um, so my partner um, is from Chile and it's all about, I've always found that, you know, you have your meat, your bits and pieces, and the salads are there. And the salads are a whole different course completely. And they're mm. fantastic. And I've kind of, if I'm doing things on my own, if I'm working my own for a, like cooking and shooting, so actually the suggestion is to serve with this, that, and the other. Right, well, rather than put it on the plate, let's have that as a completely different. And I look at it and think, that's like a family dinner. You know, I look at it, that's the sort of thing that I would expect mm. if, if we're spending time with our parents or our sister. And it's like, this is, yeah, it it, mm. it is very cultural as well. Yeah, the mm-hmm. whole, and I'm very, as I said, every day is a school day for me. And I do, if mm. I'm introduced to different cultures and different styles of food, I'm, I'm a sponge. I will suck it up and I, <laughs> and I love it. And I love, I want to be able to make sure that if I'm photographing a certain region of food, am I serving it with the right accompaniment? Have I cooked it correctly? <laughs> Have I done too much? Have I done too little? Why? Yeah, I, I want to make sure it's authentic. I want to make sure it's right because there will always be people that look at a dish and go, "That's not supposed to be there." Exactly. That. The same thing with the Italians as well, because the, the Chileans mm. and the Italians are very, very similar. We're very Mediterranean, you know. Mm. Our culture mm-hmm. is very Mediterranean, very similar to the Italians and the Spanish. So we have foods a certain way, and we have our, and we even select it with our wines. You know, mm. some of our grapes are from France. You know. Even mm. the champagne, well, <laughs> believe it or not, France, the champagne, from what I heard, they had to take back some of the seeds from Chile to plant it back in France because mm. they had some issues with some of their champagne seeds. But obviously what I'm saying is all of that is a culture thing, isn't it? Because it's all different cultures. It is, it is. Okay. And it's not just about, you know, framing the food, cooking the food, plating it up, framing it, pressing the button. There's so much more than that. So mm-hmm. much more than that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's about time we can maybe look at some of these images then. Yeah. Okay. So this is, I mentioned earlier that um, 
I do, I have done quite a bit of charity, uh, cookbooks for charity. Um, and it's one of the things I've really, really enjoyed getting involved in. So these are three, Food and Kindness for Food and Wellness. These are these are for an Oxford-based hospice. Um, this is a uh, global house hospice. And Food and Kindness, first one at the top came out, oh, it was tail end of 2020, maybe 21, when we start, when this was kind of, um, we were definitely in lockdown. And people, it, was, it was 2020 because we were allowed to get a bit more um, sociable, shall we say. Um, and with that in mind, so these kind of books, these regional and these charity books, the charity or the author of the charity in this case will find a, an amount of businesses, friends, friend businesses, you know, friends of the charity that will um, contribute a recipe and provide a recipe. So the job then is to go and visit this business, this friend of the charity, whatever, and photograph their recipe and photograph their business. So kind of, it was kind of the height of COVID, wasn't it? Kind of, you know, that, that summer of 2020. Um, very few people wanted me anywhere near them. It wasn't personal. It was understandable. So I did a lot of cooking and shooting at home. So what we've got here, food and kindness at the top left, you've got um, the cake on the right-hand side. I was actually able to uh, uh, visit this bakery in Oxford beautiful carrot cake uh and it was a matter of when you go and do things like this it's a matter of using what they have and so mm -hmm. all the the flour and the walnuts and the carrots and stuff so if you've got the ingredients we pulled it all together um this is their table it's shot on their white wall i had a um so i'm a canon user i had my fte3 um flash trigger on my camera and a uh a canon speed light on a stand with a soft box on it, uh, parallel to the table, about uh, 90 centimetres, so what's that, three feet away. And it was just, yeah, it worked. The soup with the sprinkle of parmesan, that was one of the ones that I shot at home. That's actually Mel Gedroy's mum's vegetable soup recipe. So again, this whole thing of things being passed down, and and when I sent the image for um um for approval, she said, "Mom's gonna absolutely love it." Email back and forth, "Mom's gonna absolutely adore it." She's never seen her soup look so great. So that was that. Food and Wellness is the same charity, but it was about a year on, and they decided let's go. It was all vegan and vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So it was again, but I think I did fifty percent of those at home studio so again cooked it that uh masala egg absolutely stunning rick style recipe and then on the right hand side pizza uh, made with wrap you know just simple straightforward and it's a matter of when i do this whole cook and shoot thing at home i'm very much on, on my own and it is a matter of right how do we how do we make it look but it works and people are really really um you know are really glad to give feedback and glad to give information about their recipes and are generally really happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, Generous at the bottom. So that's another hospice. That's an Edinburgh based charity. And this was a, this was pretty much a cook and shoot for me. Um, the publisher I worked with, there's about four or five of us that worked regionally for them. Um, I pretty much look after anything south of Watford. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, but they have a photographer in Scotland and there were a lot of times where they were unable to get the, you know, to get into the business to have the um, the image shot. So these two were both my, um, both my doing a truly apple tart tart tart. That was scary. When you see names, when you see famous mm. name chefs come up in a list of recipes you've got to cook, it's like, for at least, Okay, right. Um, there was a Mary Berry cake on the food and kindness. There was 
Mm. You know, there's all these um, in a couple of books I've done um, more recently, Athol Kutcher and this and the other. Oh, my word. Right. You just need to be absolutely spot on. <laughs> I'm not a trained chef, not mm. a trained chef, but I can cook. So the pie on the bottom right hand side, this was actually number two because the first one mm. collapsed. I'd never made a pie upside down. Okay. Now, pie for me, you get your dish, you put your you put your mm. page at the bottom, you put your filling <laughs> in, you crimp, crimp the top and stick it in the oven and rub it to your father's brother. Um, this was one that you built upside down. I'd never done anything like it before. Mm. It was number two, but it worked. And um, yeah, it was, uh, was an interesting... Uh, so you had to make that pie? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, everything on here, bar the cake on the top right, I've cooked and I've cooked all of that. My gosh, that's um, amazing! That's amazing. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, we're those are quality. these are really good. See, I'm are? not a, see, I'm not a chef, but I can cook, and it's one of these things. I'm very much if someone says, "Can you do that?" Yeah, I can do that. You put the phone on like, "How on earth am I going to?" <laughs> Honestly, especially the apple tart. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, that was. I, I, it's, it's the old phrase, "fake it till you make it," isn't it? And what you can't see is the other side of that apple tart because the apples weren't white, so you'll just crop it. But you know, a little bit of creative license on the cropping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cropping brilliant. sometimes saves everything. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, that's yes. really good. I'm really that's really good. A good array there. Of, you know, get nice stories behind it all as well. So thanks for that, Paul. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Let me get the next ten image up. Then we can have a look at it and see what we're going to look at Go next. On, surprise me! What we got? What we got? What we got? This looks really yummy. This is quite Chilean. <laughs> <laughs> we love our food. So, so this is one of the shots that I've done for the. Um, for Aer Lingus, for the Irish Airlines. Um, I was approached to get involved in this, uh, recommended by a, um, a a fellow food photographer who sadly was unable to um, to commit to any new projects, and she recommended me. And, yeah, so this, thank the Lord, I had a stylist on this because they wanted food art, and I've given them examples of things I've done, which were a little bit kind of fine dining, and we talked about the mm -hmm. navy food previously yeah. which was a little bit kind of michelin star and was really nicely kind of um styled and plated and through a friend i found a fantastic food stylist who now we've done about five jobs with the guys at Ellingus, and this is mm -hmm. the first shot we ever did oh. so this is hilarious because um this is airline food this is from, this is to represent something on the uh, business staff menu on certain routes that Erling is doing. Mm -hmm. And we went to the caterer that, that create the food and we were shooting there. We had a food stylist, the hair assistant, and I was there early with the food stylist and we're looking at these foil dishes. So you, I don't know if you've ever seen, when you go on an airline, the, yeah, um, yeah what, the cabin crew get given is normally a full foil dish and they have to heat it and put it on the plate, whatever. It did, it, yeah, no. We looked at it and went, okay, what are we going to do with this? Because it was, there was various dishes and there was a, a curry and the curry had soaked into one of the elements like a butternut squash or something like that and it had stained it, right, what are we going to do? So literally we started from scratch. So we deconstructed and we started from scratch. We went and got these the, the candy stripe uh, beetroot because beetroot they provided were not prettiest and it was staining my white background. So we got went and got some candy stripe beetroot and the styling. This was one of those things where you've got X amount of people in a room. You've got the mm -hmm. so the client we had the uh, the the brand director of Airlingus. The brand manager of the heading, <laughs> the graphic designer, who's become a really good friend of mine recently, stylist, stylist, me, 
my assistant and the um, the technical whiz kid um, on the computer, and we're all looking at it. And we it was very much a collaborative point. And uh, Becky, the stylist, has gone. I think we're going to do this, and the whole style and the whole direction of everything we've mm-hmm. done for Aer Lingus started at this point in mm. a conference room of Catra in Hounslow in November of 2022. <laughs> and it's just kind of gone from here. So they wanted white background. They wanted it simple, straightforward. They didn't want plates. And yeah, this is just one of many. And um, yeah, it sits on the very bottom right corner of a trifold mm-hmm. menu that you get in business class. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So only if you turn left, you turn right, you don't go. If you turn left, you're okay. Um, but yeah, so it's um, I've turned left once. I never want to turn right again. Um, but you know, it is it's it's lovely. But these just sit on the corner. This isn't full bleed, and this isn't a. This is what your dish is going to look like. This is a representation mm-hmm. menu. This route, yeah. whatever, and it's just this on the bottom right hand corner. And it's just absolutely stunning the way it's been the way it's it's been added in by mm. you know at 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 the actual design stage of the menu it just it just works mm-hmm. it might have gone a little I think she might have twisted it a little bit to the right or the left but it's you know this is the original image and I said I've done five five jobs with them so far so I think we're doing something right and it's the same team mm. time and time again they want the same team same stylist same photographer same, they want the same team which is really good really good have they ever asked you to actually photograph the ones that that's served on the on the right having seen what has been no uh, they haven't <laughs> and I they're, they're trying to move away from that from the, the, that's why they've gone this way but no I, I, I wouldn't turn down work like that mm. work is work you don't turn down work and uh, you know I like a challenge mm-hmm. yeah okay that's that's a good interesting story and I like I like the arrangement of all this you know it's really quite very you know say organic looking you know you can just imagine mm. just picking these things out somewhere you know the little you know the you know is that I'm not quite sure what the green is. I'm trying to make it out, but you know it's uh, that is micro watercress, I believe. Right. Yeah, okay. it looks like a watercress. Like and, uh, yeah. yeah. And there's a bit of dill in there, and yeah. 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 It's it, looks very, okay. it looks very Mitchell star. Way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, what's what's the next image we've got to talk about? Okay. Well, this is a nice colourful image to talk about. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So these macarons. This was this was not. A recipe. This was so I mentioned that when I go on a cookbook shoot, and this was a regional cookbook. This was a uh, this was a breakfast guide cookbook. Actually, this was a uh, best plate of sweet breakfast in and around uh, the UK. And um, this was what I refer to as a seller shot. So you photograph the recipe, and then you need to get 15, 20, 25 images to fill the rest of the chapter for that particular contributor kind of like a visual sales pitch I'm like right so we've got this we've got that and i'd seen these macarons handmade in a beautiful beautiful bakery uh where we were and i'm like i need to photograph these and so we're yeah, up to you so they gave me a tray full this is their table their wall i've done nothing to this apart from not light it again with a flash gun off camera wirelessly triggered softbox on it on the right hand side and you've got um daylight coming through like a um uh like a v light skylight you know the kind of starts mm-hmm. that in the um in the, um yeah in it in, in the roof um and this was literally me just playing i thought what am i gonna put them on oh let's get a cup and a saucer and just literally stack there's a little bit of kitchen paper and tin foil um in that cup the build it up so that they weren't hidden you know so they weren't kind of hiding i wanted this head on shot yeah it's one of my favorites actually one of my favorites and this is one of the ones where it's just kind of a this is where i was playing you know they were quite the the team 
at the cafe. They were too busy. They were too busy to play. Um, <laughs> they decent the cafe. I want to play, but I've got to go and serve customers. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just played with this, and it came out like this, and it, it yeah. Well, the color, the colors just um, you know, just brings everything together. You know, mm. it's uh, they complement each other, and and mm. and nothing, none of them kind of stands out. Jar, you know, that's kind of jarring into mm. the to you know visual. It just brings mm. it all together, and it's the quite, backdrop as well. Yeah, I love quite, the, I love the it's quite fun. It is quite a fun image, it's got that fun element about it, mm. as if you're having good fun, you know, it's kind of that, that way it does look, but uh, yeah, it's wonderful, I mean, I love it. <laughs> you say that, Brian, I always have fun when I'm working. I, 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 yeah. This job, I love this job, and I always have fun when I'm working. It could be, oh, God, this is going to be a difficult shot, but whatever, I always have fun. And um, I mentioned earlier that, you know, that um, my my inspirations when I was doing portraiture with people uh, like David LaChapelle, um, very, very famous as a portrait and fashion photographer mm. for just off the chart, bang, in your face, grab you by the eyeballs and twist colour. And I always like to keep the colour saturated. I try and get as much kind of punchy colour into what I do as possible so it grabs people's attention. Obviously, I'll tweak it if clients want something a little bit more subtle. But yeah, mm. no, it's all, I, I do like a bit of colour. And this is shot head on, hundred mil lens. So the uh, the uh, sort of perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want a wider lens for things to look a bit weird and wide, and that background line to go a little bit. You know, you've used um, hard lighting warped. as well, haven't you? Have you used hard lighting to get yeah. the colours very bright? Because it's got that yeah. modern contemporary feel, like Andrew Warhol kind of with the colours. So you can see. No, that's actually lighting. you. It's got a fashion, you know, you can see it's got that concept of fashion, but it's so mm -hmm. materialistic. But yet it all composes itself well. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Yep, yep. And it's I love hard it's, light when it's done like that, because it makes the colour pop. And it's a thing, it's got the complementary colours, hasn't it? With the blues mm. and the yellows and all that in it as well. So it's uh, it's I think as I said, it... that blue. I love Sorry, that. what what makes the for me as well? What makes the shot quite interesting is having the those um you know the two the two um macarons in the foreground. It yeah. kinds of uh because if there was only one, it looks odd. But having that two and posi positioning it the way it's positioned just um mm. balances the the weight, so it's not. Yeah. heavy on one side and it's you know something missing so it makes it more less rigid mm -hmm. because if if it was just the the cup with the macarons on it without the ones at the you know in the foreground it would have looked quite rigid but having them there mm. makes it look fun it's softening it as well isn't it you know it's got mm. that yeah, yeah absolutely yeah but you can okay, see you've got fashion influence on it because the way you've done it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. So this is our final image we're going to be looking at, and it's got a very authentic looking Italian theme. So if you want to talk us through this one, please, Paul. Thank you. So yeah, this is um actually, can I ask you guys a question? I'm, I'm looking at the image, I'm gonna ask you a question. Um was this shot outside? It looks like it's shot outside, yeah. It does, yeah. Mm, no, okay. for me it doesn't because um, I can see like quite, you know, a pronounced shadow. And usually if you shut it outside, depending on the on the direction of the sun, the, the, the shadow will then be that precise or harsh. Mm. Um, well, this is... This is me faking sunshine. This is me mm. faking midday sun. So this is me using a flash head, so a studio flash, mm. three meters up at a 90, uh, 45 degree angle, just a bare bulb. So it shines through that wine glass. And so you get, it does look like, you know, bright, um, a bright summer's day though, doesn't it? It does look like yeah. a bright summer's day. Yeah, you can, so, well, it, does, does, it does portray looking from the top. Right, coming diagonally across as if it is actually light. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. Mm. 
It does because so this is one of the cheats. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it does. Mm. Because light can be very harsh, especially if you're in the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. or like Italy, you know, or somewhere like that. The, the light is a lot harsher, and it is a lot more. Yeah. Strong, so you do get stronger. Well, shadow. this was shot in the middle of February, just outside of Coventry, on a blooming awful day. <laughs> so I wasn't about to take stuff outside. It was absolutely hammering down outside. It was not very warm. So this was one of my gorgeous backgrounds that I, this is one of my favourite backgrounds that I use. I've got quite a few of these vinyl backgrounds and they roll up and I travel with them all the time. And this is one of my favourites and just food down. And the, again, this was actually created by one of the um, the employees. At, this was the Eastern Vale Growers. They grow uh, tomatoes and lots of vegetables for majority of supermarkets if you mm -hmm. bought tomatoes in tesco say for the weight shows you probably had tomatoes grown just outside of um uh Evesham. so yeah uh but these are you know it was just a really simple shot and the person that set it up for me is a challenge simply gonna this is my recipe but great mm -hmm. so this is how we did it and as i said it's literally it flashed because i'm a control freak um and it's a matter of the between us, there was a little bit of styling. So I've got, I travel when I, when I travel to an author or a chef or a writer, nine times out of 10, I've got four or five boxes, 45 mm. litre plastic crate boxes in the boot of my car filled with um, crockery or props mm. or, mm. you okay. know, um, cutlery, you name it. <laughs> My Clio is a TARDIS, let's just put it like that. I, I think I've got, <laughs> I've got the one and only Clio TARDIS ever made. But, you know, it works. But this is, you know, you set things up and this is very much a building process. So the plate went down and the pattern went in and we had this little board with the parmesan and my favourite little grater, um, TK Maxx, awesome, £1.99, and it just gets used all the time. You know, mm. and it is what it is. And it, it, you just build this scene. And this is a... This is what I call a flat, what we call a flat length and overhead. So the camera is mm -hmm. parallel on a tripod arm to your, you know, the set to what you're photographing. So it's parallel to 50 mil lens. Um, and yeah, it just works. And it's one of my oh. favourite. But I do like the occasions where you need sunshine. You want it to have that lovely, sunny, holiday, mm. Mediterranean. Right. Yeah. You know, midday sun, um, yeah, and that's the way of doing it. Mm -hmm. That's a fair that's goal. Good as well. And what what I think I, I like about it because the key constituents of the meal are are kind of laid out, you know, as if like the, the garlic and the the cheese and the pasta and the tomatoes. It's the main ingredients that are actually, and then you've got the formulated final meal in the middle of the of this of the actual mm -hmm. image. You know, it's it's very well mm -hmm. put together. Absolutely, yeah. It's actually making me hungry. <laughs> I feel no, like I, think, you know, <laughs> I actually want to eat it now. <laughs> I should have warned you. I'm sorry. I should have warned you to get the biscuits. Yeah, I think what I like about this is actually it's rustic. It's not, um, mm. it, it doesn't look styled. It doesn't look, um, you know, kind of stagey. It looks more like a, quite a natural thing that you maybe you could find in someone's kitchen yeah mm. that i mean that's one of the most difficult things when you're trying to make mm. something not those those penne tubes sadly the mm. dry pasta they were placed and it was you know you can move it on the top right hand corner those those dry pasta tubes i can see that to me they just look placed they don't look like you've just gone because they go everywhere but yeah that's the only thing with this image i'm not a massive fan of and i look at it and go well, they still look really really placed but the client liked it the publisher loved it this was the image that the publisher chose for their recipe so happy days you know it's um it is what it is but it's this is kind of my go-to when i'm out in the car and i'm visiting four different businesses four four different uh, uh contributors on a daily basis it is very much right um, quickly but nicely, you know. Mm. So it is very 
we keep mm-hmm. the simplicity right. This is where we're going to go. This is what we do. Bang. This is what I think. Yes, we'll go with that. Great. And um, there are tweaks that the the um, the business owner might want to might want to make. It's their recipe mm-hmm. being shown in the book. So yeah, why not? But this is for me. This is my go-to quick styling method ingredient. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what goes with this. The fact of the matter is, these guys grow only tomatoes, only millions of tomatoes in a year. We mm. have to have those vine tomatoes in there. The tomatoes are key ingredient in that right. dish. Yeah. yeah. What do you have for pasta? Absolutely. You have basil and parmesan. It's it's classic, isn't it? So you just yeah. build it. So it's things yeah. people recognise. Yeah, and it's I really... think what it is is that it the way you know. What it says to me is that someone just finished the cooking, plated it, put the the two, uh, the cutleries mm. right into the into the um into the dish. Just basically, I'm about to pick that up with the with the glass of wine, and then I can go some sit somewhere else. Yes, so that's the yeah. type of yeah, that's the type of um story that you know. Did you comes to mind imagine looking at it. I'm going to let you into a little secret there, Janet. going to let you into a little secret. Mm-hmm. That's blackcurrant squash. No. <laughs> <Not> yeah. <wine>. No, because <laughs> it looks like red wine. Yes, it's really, really, really strong <laughs> blackcurrant apple. <laughs> it works like a <laughs> <green>. Works like <laughs> an absolute yeah, green. I bet, it, I bet it tasted more like, like um, you know, uh, sweet wine that you get from <laughs> what was that? The one that you see number seven. You know when you yeah. buy it, when you look at wine and then the back <laughs> only has one, two, three. You know what? That was a <laughs> that was a fifty fifty mix of water and juice. I wasn't about to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, been, you know what? I have to say that's been. Well, thanks for sharing those images and all your backstories. The stories you gave us there, Paul. It's been an absolute pleasure. So for people that are. Uh, listening to us and, and seeing what you've presented, where's, where's the best place that we can see all your work that we can maybe have a look at to get some more inspiration? Well, uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'm at PGP Food Photography um, on both platforms, or the website is paulgregoryphotography.co.uk. Um, very, yeah, if you, if you just Google Paul Gregory um Broken photography, you find wedding. There's loads of us. You find wedding photography. You find portrait photography. So, yeah, Paul Gregory dot Paul Gregory Photography dot co dot uk. Right. Okay, and we'll put all these um these links to your social medias and your mm-hmm. website at the bottom. Thank of you. This. So, so I'd just like to say it's been a an absolutely enlightening uh, discussion for me this this evening because it's opened my eyes to food photography and I'll, when I pick up a recipe book I'll look at it different now so thank you for this tonight it's been much appreciated thank you thank, thank you I really enjoyed it and by the way pasta is my favourite meal so thanks Paul for sharing that to us thank you thank you so much Paul for actually you know joining us tonight um I did say earlier that um I, I did have some questions, but um mm-hmm. think maybe next time you come you come back again and then we, we would can, love to have you back. Could, Indeed. We could ask it and and um, yeah, but it's been quite a pleasure actually yeah. um having you here and you know the the stories and and the you know food is well, the food that's been photographed is absolutely amazing. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all for having work. me. It's been a pleasure. Not at all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. I hope everyone has enjoyed this. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, guys. Um...